Once you've learned how to take the Laplace transform of a derivative of a function, you normally move on pretty quickly and start to take the Laplace transform of differential equations in order to solve them. Often you start with equations like those shown here. First or second order, linear, constant coefficients, but non-homogeneous with some function f of t on the right. In the case of the first order, you'd need a boundary condition y of 0 to be given. For a second order equation, you need two boundary conditions for y of 0 and the derivative y dot of 0. Those are needed in order to work out what the integration constants are after you've integrated the equations. If you're lucky, the function f of t on the right will be a simple function whose Laplace transform you either know or can look up somewhere quickly. Functions like polynomials in t or perhaps an exponential, or a simple trig function like sine or cos. In some branches of engineering, though, we encounter other kinds of function on the right-hand side. These include, but are not limited to, to, the square wave function, the triangular wave function, the rectified sine wave, and something called the sawtooth function. In a moment, we'll have a look at the triangular wave. The point about these functions that I've mentioned, though, is that they are all periodic. They repeat themselves over and over, starting with a basic unit. Let's look at the triangular wave as an example. It looks like this. To keep it simple, I've drawn a height of 1. So starting at the origin, it raises up to the point 1, 1, and then drops down again to the point 2, 0. That defines the basic triangular shape. Beyond that, it repeats itself. Since the basic unit has length 2, it's repeating with period 2. If we're to get anywhere manipulating this function, we will need to have rules to define it. We need to do that in a piecewise manner. That is, we'll define the basic unit of the function and then say that it repeats with period 2. Look at the left-hand side of the first triangle. The origin up to 1, 1. It's a straight line, so that's just the function f of t equals t from 0 to 1. From the peak, we've got a drop back to 2, 0. Can you see that that must be the function 2 minus t between 1 and 2? That's defined the basic unit, and so we then say that f repeats itself with period 2. Well, when we started off, we had such an f on the right-hand side of a differential equation. If we want to solve it, the equation with Laplace transforms, we'll need to know how to take the Laplace transform of such a function. Let's remind ourselves about the transform. It's just got by doing the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt. We normally add the proviso that s should be positive in order, order to try and ensure that the integral converges as t heads off to infinity. But now perhaps we see a problem. The integral is 0 to infinity. Our function, in this example the triangular wave, is only defined with a proper rule from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2. Whereas we need to have a rule for the function that works all the way up to infinity. We go back and look at it again. Can you see that between 2 and 4 we'll have completely different rules? It won't be f of t equals t or 2 minus t anymore, but something different. And even if we can work out those rules, it'll be different again from 4 to 6 and so on. We can't work out an infinite number of rules. So are we stuck? Well, the answer is no. Let's think a bit more about our Laplace transform. Suppose we have a periodic f, and I'm now going to just leave the triangular wave behind and talk about f in general. Suppose the period is t. What can we say about the Laplace transform? Well, the integral from 0 to infinity could be broken up into steps. 
first of all over the first period from 0 to t, then the second period from t to 2t, and so on. I put dots there to indicate that this process goes on forever. Let's actually write down this process now with the f of t's and the exponentials in. I've got to stop somewhere, so I've stopped when I got to 3t, but you can see the idea is that it continues forever. Look at the first integral. That's just the integral from 0 to capital T. It's the first period, and so that's the basic unit that the function starts from. From 0 to t, we know the form of f of t, so we could do that first integral in principle. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get all the other integrals to just look like they're from 0 to t, instead of t to 2t and 2t to 3t and so on? Well, it turns out that there is a trick that we can make that happen. Let's look at the second integral. That's the one from t to 2t. I'm going to make a transformation or a substitution to a new variable, tau, the Greek letter t. Let tau be little t minus capital T, just in that integral. Rearranging, we could explore the consequences. That means that little t is tau plus capital T, and so dt is the same as d tau. To make the substitution, we also need to change the integration limits so that they're appropriate for tau. When little t is at the bottom limit, capital T, then tau would be zero, wouldn't it? t minus t. So the bottom limit for the tau integral will be zero. On the other hand, when little t reaches the value 2 times capital T, tau will be 1 of capital T. So we can now do the substitution, and our new integral is from 0 to t, and the new variable is tau. In the exponential, I've changed little t to tau plus t, and the same in the function f. But now remember that f is a periodic function. So where we see f of tau plus t, we could just change that back to f of tau, because the height of the function f will be the same at tau as it is at tau plus t due to the periodicity. I've also broken up the exponential using the rules for powers. It's e to the minus s tau times e to the minus s capital T. The f has now become just f of tau. The variable is tau, and so the quantity e to the minus s capital T is a constant as far as this integral is concerned, so we can pull it through to the front. That gives us this integral. Notice that the limits are just exactly what we wanted. We've changed them from t to 2t back to 0 to t. But now tau is just an integration variable. Its name is immaterial. So it would be perfectly valid to change the name back to little t. Therefore, our second integral, the one from t to 2t, has been changed back from 0 to t, but at the cost that we now have this exponential at the front. Well, if this has worked for one of those integrals, perhaps it would work for all of them. Well, in fact, that is the case. Here's the next one. I've told you what transformation to make. Instead of little tau equals t minus t, we now use t minus 2 capital T. The result is the following. I won't do it all in detail. I'll leave it for you to explore. It all goes exactly as before, except that now the factor at the front is different. It's e to the minus 2s capital T. I'm sure you can extrapolate what's going to happen to all the other integrals. We're going to get the next one, e to the minus 3st, e to the minus 4st, and so on. Let's write that out. This is what it looks like. The only integral left to do is the one from 0 to t. But that's an integral that, in principle, we can do because we know the form 
for f of t in that interval. The factor outside is an infinite series. But, look, it's an infinite series that we know about. We can sum it. It's actually just a geometric series, isn't it? Yeah, maybe that's a bit more familiar if I write it as a sum of powers. We do know how to sum such a series. Let me remind you. It's 1 plus x plus x squared plus and so on is 1 over 1 minus x. So long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. Now our exponentials are negative exponentials and so they will all certainly be less than 1. So not 0 but 1 in magnitude. So we can sum this series and finally we have 1 over 1 minus x but x is the exponential e to the minus st integral 0 to t f of t e to the minus st dt. OK, so we've got an integral we can do. We've got rid of the whole infinite string of integrals, but at the price that we have this factor out the front. That's how we deal with a periodic function. So let's just write in summary for f of t periodic with period t the Laplace transform of f is got by doing 1 over 1 minus e to the minus st and the integral instead of 0 to infinity just the integral over a single period of the appropriate function. It remains to do some more examples. In some other maths casts, I will look at the four functions I looked at. I mentioned before the square wave, the triangular wave, the rectified sine wave, and the sawtooth. <laughs>